Alan, thanks for joining us on VIP Boxing YouTube channel. Uh, we usually have boxers, but we've got a bit of media royalty with you. You've won more awards than most fighters win world title fights. I mean, Mayweather had years of winning world title fights. You won as many awards. I mean, I don't want to make your head, you know, get a bit bigger because you're a good man. I've known you many years, but we're going to speak boxing today. But before we go on to it, I've got to ask you that backdrop you've got there. Well, it was a great crowd. We went, remember we did David Hay there when he fought Del Boy Chisora as well. That was a great night as well. But uh, that was this was the uh, last ever game at uh, the bowling when West Ham victoriously came back to win and beat Manchester United. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a bad night. A sad night. A very sad night. As yourself, like a Fulham fan, you wouldn't want to get rid of Craven Cottage, would you? No, hey, if, if Craven Cottage went, a part of me would go. It's, part, it's such a big part of my life even now. And I've got a lot of West Ham fans, uh, friends, who are fans. A very good friend of mine is in the Cockney Rejects who sang that night. And he's even stopped going to the Olympic Stadium. Um, he just doesn't feel it's what, what West Ham was. And I think many of the older generation of West Ham fans feel that way. Yeah, that's very true. Listen, the Olympic Stadium was an amazing stadium in 2012 and it, it held a lot of memories for me, especially like Super Saturday with Jess Ennis and Mo Farah, what happened on, on that Saturday. It is a football stadium, but as football fans, we have to move on. We're in a bad time at the moment. You know, I was doing a lot of games at West Ham during lockdown. I was one of the privileged ones and it was horrible being in that stadium, being so empty. But we all had to go through it in the stadium. I actually went to Craven Cottage as well in lockdown. And it was horrible being in stadiums in lockdown. So let's hope we all get back to our stadiums. So you sent me a great picture of Craven Cottage when you were there that night. You texted me a picture. But also not just, you know, obviously you won a wall to football. I've got to know you through boxing, had some fantastic trips with you, I know how hard you work. You're an absolute workaholic, Dickie. I'm not just blowing you up there because you're a pal. And, you know, you're winning this accolade to this magnificent book, Life Behind the Lens. Tell me how that came about, especially, you know, you know, there's so many great boxing pictures in there, but how was you approached to do the book? Pitch Publishing came to me, and I thought it was some kind of a joke at first, and they said, we want to uh, do your life, stuff, your life in pictures. And it was like, no, you're having a laugh. I was off at the time, with a, uh, recovering from a toe operation. They said, no, 100%, we want to do it. Can you put your material together? So we had 20 years uh, put by. That was pretty simple. So we had to just collate the next 10 years of work, uh, and then we had a massive big uh, conference call with Pitch Publishing, and, they, and the only thing I don't really do is motor racing and rugby. And that was one of the questions they said. Why have you got no motor racing? Why have you got no rugby? I said, well, I don't do it. I do boxing, I do football, and I do cricket. Okay, that's fine. The next thing, sign the contract. And then uh, it just went from strength to strength. It, it, it was good going back into the uh, News UK archives to, to find all my old negatives because I wanted to do better scans. And when I was in there, they were showing me glass plate negatives of uh, Henry Cooper versus Muhammad Ali. And I was actually holding these glass plate negatives. And they found these in the library. They, no one knew they had these, these negatives. It was brilliant seeing them, holding these up. I showed Mike Goodall, he's desperate to get hold of a copy of these pictures. They are so, so good. A lot of people will, but tell me what boxing means to you. I mean, I, mean, I think football's your first love. Um, but I think I know boxing means a lot to you. You've been all over the world. Uh, you know, you're just as happy as you call as you are in Las Vegas, even though the shopping malls won't be as good for you. Um, I'm going, I'm one of the lucky ones on Saturday night. I'm going to York Hall. I'm going to boxing for the York Hall show. So I can't wait to go back into boxing. I feel sorry for a lot of people, you know, who can't go to boxing. You think that mecca of boxing, York Hall, is going to be empty on Saturday night, but Frank Warren and BT will do their very best to make it, to make it work. That's why I love I love doing boxing. You know, you, like yourself, you love to get involved with these people, uh, build relationships with these people. Because we used to do that with footballers, but you can't get near a footballer now. But boxers have still got this special time for your relationship, and even your old contacts that you were working with, like twenty twenty five years ago, will always still bend over backwards and help you out. And like recently, I had in lockdown with Nigel Ben. You know, I knew he was living with Connor. <clears throat> Got hold of Nigel. Nigel, you all right? Is everything good? I heard that, you know, the sad loss, you know, of your brother. And next thing, we're chatting away and he's telling me he's got COVID. Come round, we'll do some training pictures because they were both in training and training with COVID. I had a little bit of it. 
I knew I was safe to go there. So, you know, we did some pictures. Boxers in, in, uh, boxers in this COVID period were doing some strange things for training. I was uh, road, rate, road, rate, road bike racing with Joshua Baraxi. He's turned into a massive cyclist. He could do the Tour de France. I think Connor's uh, cycling now as well. I was doing uh, Big Lawrence Co in his back garden in, uh, in North London. Uh, you, that's why the boxers have always got, they always help you out. They're always helping you out, as you know. Yeah, I mean, I just want to ask you about some of the pictures in your book that um, stood out to me a couple of, I was, you know, I was there with you at a couple of these fights. Uh, one that um, I, wasn't at, I wasn't at this fight, actually. I think I was in the Box Nation studio that night. But I don't think many people didn't watch in Box Nation because uh, you was at Dillian White, Lucas Brown, and uh, the picture there won you a sports photographer of the year from the Society of Edit Editors. What was the story of that yeah. picture of White and Brown? <clears throat> I can remember it was just one-way traffic. You know, it, it, he was just absolutely pounding and pounding and pounding on him. And you... You know, as a photographer, as a reporter, ringside yourself, you just you just keep saying, "That's enough, ref. Stop this fight. Stop this fight." But the ref just kept on going, and every picture just got better and better. And Dillian threw this massive right, and he hit him clean on the jaw. But oh, it was the back of uh, the, the man, and his his head twisted, and all the sweat and the gum shield and the blood and everything, and and there was Dillian following through, and it just made the absolute perfect boxing uh, picture I remember because my, my daughter goes to the boxing as well and she sits beside me ringside she edits the images round by round by round and and all I heard from her was effing and jeffing because she was dressed up to the nines with my computer and she got blood and everything all over her so <laughs> that was quite funny and she still but she always to... tells me yeah she goes yeah she goes she edits but she always tells me she found that picture so I, I won the award for you she didn't take the picture she just found it on the card that she was supposed to do well, I hope the certificate you got for that, I hope that's it in your daughter's bedroom, not, not in your, in anywhere else in the house. Your daughter won that award. You're not really sports photographer of the year. Your daughter is, right? Yeah, no. You're honest. You're, you're... It reminds me. <laughs> yeah, she reminds me of that. Um, so one of the bloodiest fights we, we went to, I think, was um, Lennox Lewis's final fight when he beat Vitaly Klitschko. And, you know, that was another fight I remember as, as a great image um, in the book there of Vitali afterwards, you know, memories of that fight. I remember, if, if I remember like me, it was a long time ago. Lennox was he was down on the scorecards, wasn't he? He was getting beaten, getting beaten quite badly, wasn't he? Yeah. But all of a sudden, he just opened up with the ramrod jab that he was so famous for, and it was like bang, bang, bang. And within seconds, you see the underneath of the eye and above the eye, and it just opened up completely. And I had to grab a long lens, <clears throat> which was down by ringside, which was like a 200 millimeter lens, because you knew the money shot was going to be this big head shot. And it was just like tomato ketchup coming, coming out, of his, uh, out of his face. It was, it was a gruesome picture. <clears throat> and there was, do you remember the press conference after? Yeah. I went to the press conference and Klitschko was moaning how he got head butted, didn't he? Yeah. He was. And Lennox, I remember they finished the press conference and Lennox came behind me and, I, and, I, and he just glanced at my computer screen. I said, take a look, look at your night's work, Len. And he goes, yeah, looks like I headbutted him five times. And he, <laughs> because that was a big joke because he said he got headbutted. But that's the rapport, you know, we have with these fighters. They, they, they can still make jokes, can't they? Yeah, but you were with Lennox for a lot. I can't think. I mean, I was with most of them fights in the 90s abroad. And I think you must have did a couple more than, than me. I don't think... You, might, you, you can't have missed many Lennox Lewis fights from when he, you know, from even when he was upcoming, from the Gary Mason fight onwards, even before, I guess. I remember that. That was at the Royal Albert Hall, wasn't it? I remember that fight. Yeah, Wembley, that, Wembley, the, that one, Lennox, Wembley. Was it Wembley? What was yeah, the one? Was, at, what was the one? Yeah, Glenn McCrory, Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, that's it. Photographing Lennox there. It was incredible. I can remember doing, you know, Lennox when he'd first come over and Maloney was... Uh, Getting him to meet everybody, wasn't he? And all of a sudden, did, he, yeah. he turned into a, yeah, he turned into a chess player. They got Stan Pincher playing chess with him. Yeah, playing chess with him. <laughs> but he was always game, wasn't he, Lennox? He was so good. He was so and, good for pictures. As you say, these relationships come from you shooting at him throughout his boxing life and showing him pictures and stuff, don't it? This and these relationships are built. They don't just happen overnight, do they? No, no. You always used to, you know, when, with the footballers, you'd go to the dark room, do us a spare set of pictures for me. 
because you'd always give the pictures away. You know, Big Frank loved the picture. Nigel Ben loved the picture. Even like Eubanks, you'd, you'd give him some pictures, you know. that's what it's, But now it's, oh, send me an image because I want it for my social media. It's completely changed. <laughs> Those days are over, yeah. When mum wants a picture for the front room, now they want it for Instagram. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah, it's I agree. Fight, it's a shame, some, really. It's another fight. You've had some good times. You was always around. You, you was around a lot. David Hay. You must have had some great nights with David. Yeah, I remember the one. Uh, I, it was the like sort of the homecoming when he fought Ru- John, Ruiz, didn't he, at uh, Manchester? And we we get some good access from Mike Goodall. You know, Mike Goodall's a great man. He puts all the rings up for for the, all the promoters, and he allowed me to get a remote camera above above the ring. Uh, you have to climb the little step ladder about 30 feet, help and safety would go crazy if they knew what we were doing. So we, we put this remote camera above the roof and I said to Hay, when you knock him out, make sure you walk through your logo and make sure you look up like that. He knocked him out. I think the fight got stopped. He walked through his logo, but he forgot to look up. But it, it still made a beautiful picture because Hay was walking through his, you know, this beautiful logo that he always does on his shirt. That made quite nice. But you can't get everything right and scripted. <laughs> one trip I, well, I was with you at um, and um, well, we went to Madison Square Garden Joe Calzaghe for, against Roy Jones Jr I mean it meant it was, it was I think Joe finished up then and Roy Jones sadly continued boxing um, you know we had Joe on the floor in the first round and he battled back to win the fight yeah it was an incredible night that was it was the same as like the fight before as well though with Bernard Hopkins wasn't it he got put down in the first round there and schooled Hopkins, as you say. Then we went to the garden, and you say he got put down in the first round. But after that, he just absolutely uh, schooled him, didn't he, Roy Jones? He 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 was and everything. He knew it was the end of the era, wasn't it? He was really putting a big party show on. And uh, usually with Joe, he just does his business, gets a decision, or knocks a person out, puts his hands up. But you knew this was going to be a magic moment. <clears throat> Well, we needed a picture to show that Joe had finished his career. He'd never been beaten. And he'd come out of the ring. I said, Christ, Joe, give us a picture. Do a picture for us. And he just, for some reason, he just leant back and he went, oh, I'm Superman. And it just, it made a beautiful image as he had. His belt around his waist and everything. I was, I was lucky, you know, that, that was part of a set that won me Sports Song for the Year. So all pictures don't just happen like that. Sometimes you may have to set images up to make a decent image. And luckily, you could talk to boxers like that. You wouldn't be able to get away with it. You, know, you can't really say to Lionel Messi, oh, can you celebrate for me, please? <laughs> but, you know, boxers, you can. Well, you, you, you've been around them. You, you know, you're around them a lot. So, one, you know, that you, know, like you mentioned Nigel Ben earlier, you know, that relationship with him got you, you know, few photographers were getting out doing jobs uh, during COVID. You, man, and I remember, the, I remember the, the feature two-page spread you had in the sun um, with it. Um, you know, you 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 know, you get to know these. You even during COVID, you're getting out. Yeah, yeah, so yeah Nigel. It, uh, you know, we go we go back a long way. You know, I remember turning up on his doorstep in Tenerife when he was training in Tenerife. Well, just flew uninvited. Over there. Yeah, just flew over there as you do. But I was told by someone, and I can't. Wait, oh, don't worry, Nigel's expecting you. So we turn up, and he's like, "What the?" Like you doing here, I don't want you here. You're no good. And look, Nigel, we just want a nice set of pictures showing what you do here. No one's ever seen it. Oh, okay then. What do you want to do? I said, running, everything. And then he took us up to Mount TB. I didn't run with him. No way was I going to run with Nigel at Mount TB. No, not a chance. And so we went running up there. We did him down down in, in, in the training camp down there. And, and it got me really, and Nigel always said to me, he said, you, I bet you won't send me any pictures. And I sent Nigel over 200 pictures from, from that, from that uh, training session. And after that, we really, really clicked. And I remember that night with Gerald McLennan, a, a, a Daily Mirror photographer said to me, oh, Nigel's going to get done here, he's going to lose this fight. And I went, I bet he does. He said, no, he's not strong enough. I said, bet he wins. I'll have a tenner with you, he wins. And then like the first round, put, you know, Nigel got put through the ropes and put on his backside, didn't he? He all went through and there was always the dodgy thing about the dodgy count. <clears throat> and then Nigel slowly, slowly got back into that fight, didn't he? Danny Mancini, do you remember in the corner, he was yeah. pushing him and pushing him. And was it the fourth or the fifth or something like that? And Nigel got put down right in front of the photographers. 
And I remember him looking at me and I looked at him and I said to Nigel, get the up. You are going to do this. Get up, get up. Because we could see what was going on. You know, you could see that, you know, what was going on with Gerald McClendon. You could see it happening, you know. And then Nigel, he, he won that fight. He won that fight. And I remember we was in Vegas the week after that fight <clears throat> and the lift door opened at the MGM Grand. It went ding. And Nigel come out and he gave me the biggest hug and he said, you got me through that fight. You people got me through that fight. I said, leave it. Out. It wasn't us. We was just encouraging. We didn't want you to lose. It was the likes of Danny Mancini in the corner that got you through that fight. Yeah. What was the best fight you shot? That fight must be up there, um, Ben McClellan, despite the tragic uh, ending. It was a tragic, tragic fight. But for pictures, it was just incredible, wasn't it? It was incredible. You know, you never want to see anybody, you know, that to happen in boxing. But, you know, an amazing fight. It was London Arena, wasn't it? And remember the London Arena? It was just a tiny little court, you know, this thing. It was just... And you couldn't even barely get onto the island, could you? Remember the Island Dogs? Yeah. You couldn't even get on there. I think I, we were staying at the hotel up the road because it's the fight hotel. We had to walk to the hotel. That's right. Do you remember? Yeah. Well, true, yeah. wasn't in that weekend. That's why I remember it as much as the fight. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that at ringside once before. It's horrible. I had to run. <laughs> I was in Birmingham. I don't know what I had before it. <laughs> so, uh, do, do, you know, what, what, so, do you still have the same enthusiasm for the boxing as you've had over the years as you build new relationships now? 100%. 100%. Because they're just human beings that want to interact with you. And once you get in with them, you, you've cracked it, haven't you? You do a set of pictures with them and they, they're, in a way, they're like your mates. They're talking to you, and you see this next generation come along again. You know, I get on quite well with, as, as I said, Braxy. I thought I got him twice. All of a sudden, we get on really well now. Oh, thank you. You know, he's such a humble, polite man. Thank you for them pictures. I really do appreciate that. And that's nice, isn't it? That's yeah. so, so nice. It's like, you know, someone who would say to you, oh, thanks for doing that story. I really appreciate yeah. that, isn't it? Same thing. It goes a long way. A thank you goes a long way of anybody. Yeah, yeah. Big Frank, you know, like Big Frank, I remember that night he won the, the world title. Do you remember against Oliver oh, McCall at Wembley Stadium? Was it? Oh, what, what a fight. What a night that was. And, you know, Frank done me a very, very big favour in the build-up to that fight. And uh, I remember when he won that, won that he went to his, his wife. And then he came over to me and he, just, he gave me this kiss and he said, thank you. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's in the book. I've never written about it. I'm not going to talk about it. But, it, something like that, you know, he just come over to me, kissed me and said, thanks very much. I appreciate that. Brilliant. Well, Dickie Pelham, um, we appreciate you joining us today and uh, letting us use some of these uh, award-winning images um, to go with it, this feature. Can't thank you enough for joining us today. No, it's great to be with you. I love talking uh, all sorts of sports, not just talking photography and F-stops and shutters, but he's actually talking about images. It's great. Well, you've been around sport enough to know enough about it, as much as you do about shutter speeds and images. And Yeah, but Pat Sheehan always taught me, didn't he? He's the shop steward. He always said he used to teach me. <laughs> <laughs> and Lord Art. <laughs> Vicky, thanks very much. No problem. Take care. Thank you. For all boxing, info, news and latest interviews, amateur and pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP boxing promotions, also Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.